So we got the classic with pistachio, my favorite way of eating baklava. And we also got chocolate baklava. First stop on our tour around Karakui. Fish rock. Look at this rug. Wow. All the spices is in here. Lettuce, pepper, tomato, onions, cucumber, and then the grilled fish, which was grilled over charcoal. So a specialty here in Karakoi is the balik durum. Balik durum is fish wrap. So it, unlike the balik ekmek that has the thicker bread, this actually has a really thin wrap that they put the fish in, which is really nice because you actually get more of the taste of the fish. Well, let's take a bite. It's so bright, I have shades on, you can't see my eyes, but I guarantee you they're bulging out because this is absolutely delicious. Taste the fish, but you also taste it. He puts pomegranate molasses in here, it gives it a nice flavor. And even mixing with those greens, there's mint. It really gives it a refreshing kick. And I love that spice blend on the outside. Not only you put spices in the wrap, he puts it on the outside and grills the wrap up so it gets a little crispiness. It's smoky too because it's grilled on charcoal. This is absolutely delicious. There's so many vendors in this area. We just picked this one because he's grilling over charcoal. Kind of a random operation right outside of Karakoi Balik Evi. Absolutely incredible. What a beautiful, beautiful view of the Asian side. We've been staying at the Asian side of Istanbul and to see it from a distance from Europe, you really get to appreciate it even more. If you are coming to Istanbul, you like less touristy stuff, like less tourist, less crowd, go to Asian side. Definitely worth it. You get to watch the sunset setting over Europe side next to Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque. But look at that, stunning. And you just need a ferry ride to cross. which literally translates to Karakui Soup House. Now, even though it's very hot outside, we love this soup. I'm having the sour soup, which is vegan, and Greg is having something that's lamb. Love my garlic. got here the Kel Pasha. Now sometimes this soup can be used with sheep head or veal head or different offal. Like in this case, on the menu they say it's veal trotter, so like the foot. And the soup is very creamy, almost milky. Look at that color. I'm gonna try it first. Mm. It's very rich, creamy. The meat is so soft and tender. I believe this is, it does taste like veal. They do say on the menu is veal trotter. It does taste like it. But what you really have to do to make this soup next level, you have to add all the toppings. Squeeze some lemon in here. Just cut through that richness. Gonna add some of this minced garlic. Lots of it, I'm a garlic lover. Crushed red chili. I've noticed here the red chili here in Turkey is a little bit salty and not as spicy as what I'm accustomed to say in Thailand or really other spicy countries, but I like that because it doesn't overwhelm. I'm just gonna put everything in here. Oregano, dried mint. You got it all. You can really customize your bowl. That lemon cuts through that richness. It's a very rich soup. I've actually heard that this soup is, people like to have this after a night of drinking. It's supposed to be a real hangover buster and I can totally see why. Especially I can imagine it's on a really cold night. But even on a hot day like this is quite delicious. You really get your workout filled walking in your upside. It's so steep. And in this 
part of the episode where you buy us a coffee, we do the walking and mostly the drinking, thanks to you down here below for making this even more possible. Now, help us support more local shops like this one by buying us a coffee. Thank you. We made it to one of the most famous Turkish coffee shops here in Istanbul. It's called Manda Batmas. This place is so cool. I walked inside, it's a little hole in the wall spot. I saw them making the Turkish coffee. They use a copper chesve. It's like a, they also call it uh, ibrik. It's where you make the, you put the coffee in, the water, and then put it over high heat. So the foam bubbles up to the top and then you turn it off, pour it into the cup. Not even really like a foam, it's just like, looks very thick and muddy, like, oh, smells amazing. Oh, this one's really finely ground and very strong flavor, like, nice pleasant bitterness to it. None of a unique flavor to other Turkish coffees I've tried, it's very good. Definitely see why this is one of the, known as one of the best in this time I happen to agree, at least so far. What I also love about the shop, it's located here in Meolu, a little north of Karakoy, in like a little side alleyway. It's off of the main Istiklal Kadesi. It's on that little side road. It's really cool. Like they have all this outdoor, low wooden tables, low wooden stools. That's become a thing here, I noticed, with coffee and tea shops. And I'm all for it. I love it. It's a great shop. the funicular, they call it the Tuno, I think I'm pronouncing it right, it goes back to 1875 from Beolu to Karakuy. So it's really cool, it's, it's a very quick ride and you just use your Istanbul car like you would ride in the subway or ride in a ferry here. It's cool, it's definitely worth taking, it saves you that really steep walk down or up. In Istanbul, we just can't get enough of Midya Doma. It's become one of our favorite foods in the whole city. It's not nicely presented there. They look beautiful. Really fat chunks of muscle, stuff with that rice. And when I like at first glance, it doesn't look like it's overfilled with the rice, which is nice. I'm really excited to try it. Yeah. Try first without lemon, just pure. Mm. You really get that muscle taste so fresh. The rice is really nice, nicely flavored, but it doesn't overwhelm the muscle. Really get that taste of the muscle, which I really appreciate. Delicious stuff. Come to Karakuy and not stop at the most famous baklava shop in all of Istanbul. At least from what we've read, it's called Guluoglu Karakoy Guluoglu. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation, but this spot is popping. It's really old school inside. It's back to 1843. They have so many different varieties of baklava. We got the classic with pistachio, my favorite way of eating baklava, and we also got chocolate baklava. Whew, so good. Look at all that ground pistachio on top, all the pistachio inside. That is just a sinful bite of baklava right there. Oh my God. It's sweet, it's quite buttery too, but it balances it well. I don't think it's overly sweet like some baklava can be, but it is absolutely delicious. There's a lot of generous amount of pistachio in there, but I'm really curious about this chocolate. Mm. Damn. 
really rich chocolate flavor. Same level of sweetness, you're gonna get that, that hit of that buttery flavor too, but I love that rich chocolate taste. Jumi, I think you'd like this one. I've never had chocolate baklava, so this is going to be interesting. It smells very chocolatey. These two, it melts in your mouth, it's so chewy. You can taste the pistachio and in chocolate, you can really taste the cho chocolate. It's also, I think they use dark chocolate, but mixed with the honey, ah, it's delightful. Glory. We wanted to get chai at the baklava spot, but we passed this place where, well, this little corner first before the baklava, and we thought of coming back here just to get chai. Because what a better way to have chai than sitting on a stool, facing the Bosphorus Sea, with the sun setting in the background. Well, you can't really see the sunset here, the best sunset spot is right next door, right there. You just take a ferry, you just take it. But um, it's the, the ambience. It's the ambience we're here.